saying though at the Cyber Security Summit here in uh, Marina Bay Sands in Singapore and uh, today we'll be talking about metaverse and cyber resilience in metaverse and for this topic I'm very very privileged and very pleased to have Mr. Vira Mentri who is a uh, CISO with SC Ventures, Ventures which is Standard Charter, um, part of Standard Charter and he will be sharing with us his uh, highlights of his presentation on this particular topic. So thank you so much, uh, Viran, for joining us today. Thank you, Ms. Jane, yeah. for having me. Thank you. So to start off, what is the metaverse? Because obviously the term was coined back in 1992, is it, by Neil Stevenson? Yeah. And a lot of people has different ideas of what it means. Since. So tell us about get what it, you think it. it means. Okay. Uh, but before I uh, talk about what is metaverse, I'll quickly uh, mention about why I'm so passionate about it. Yeah, right? sure. Uh, as you uh, mentioned, I work for SC Ventures, which is an innovation arm of Standard Chartered Bank. And as part of my day job, uh, I make sure that ventures, including crypto ventures, including our metaverse initiatives, we want to make sure that they all the cyber resilience is taken care of. And this is very emerging. You know, it's not yet there. Some pieces are there, and therefore I'm quite hopeful that we arrive in a state of metaverse in a very comfortable and safe manner. Right. So to your question on what is metaverse, metaverse to me, in short, it, it means that you are in a world which is a three-dimensional digital world. And unlike our journey so far, where we go into remote working environment, facing each other on cameras, uh, hopefully in the near future, we will enter a virtual environment where I would say that our digital versions, we call, let's call them avatars, right? digital avatars, we will be comfortable sitting and it will give you a, a lot more immersive experience. Obviously, I mean, a lot of thing is, is still in a state of hype because this is still emerging. So it's not there yet or it's not very elegant, but the hope is with the evolution of technologies and rapid improvements in uh, digital headsets, advancements in uh, AR, VR, what we call as augmented reality or virtual reality, uh, we hope to see a lot more improvement and make it a real life experience. So you're talking about that we need some form of uh, headsets for this immersive experience. I mean, I don't like them, right? <laughs> Today's versions are quite ugly in my right. frank it opinion. Right, it might become those right? Terminator type versions, Correct. right? I mean, hopefully, like I want to see lens. as if I'm wearing, today I wear uh, glasses, right, while driving. And it should become as seamless as wearing simple glass, right? But I was, uh, it, it's good that you know about this Neil Stephenson guy. You know, you mentioned, you, uh, I was impressed that you know, Metaverse term was coined back in 1992, and it's mm -hmm. quite right. If you have read the novel, it's fascinating. If you really want to understand Metaverse, to read that book, okay. and then you completely understand what Metaverse is. Oh, right, okay. Is, is that would be a takeaway for our, our audience. Yeah. Read the book. I mean, just imagine the concept that, he, he brings out the uh, fictional concept that a COVID-like virus, a real virus in the real world, or I would say the virus in the Metaverse, imagine a virus that, is that exists in the Metaverse, mm. will infect your brain in the real world. Wow. I mean, it's, it's, wow, it's, it's a bit wild and a bit, uh, you know, future far-fetching, but just try to absorb that concept. As much as I'm skeptical about every technology that comes in, I don't want to just uh, write off the possibilities that could happen. Right, so talking about the book and the fact that, you know, the book talks about the virus that can potentially infect our real-world brains, right? So that takes me to the next question the threats that we may potentially, you know, experience in metaverse. So why is it an important sort of uh, topic to address now to, like you say, to make it a safer place in Correct. the future to prepare us? So what are the kind of threats you think are happening now or will happen? Okay, so I think we need to ought to compare the current world and the future world that we hope to get into metaverse. Our current world, as we know, we are already plagued with a lot of cyber security issues. But I'm, I don't want to just focus on corporates and organizations, but even on people, right? As a society, we get fooled by phishing attacks and all this. So will they continue to happen in the metaverse? Or will we have a better world where we will be able to solve these problems? I don't think so. 
let's understand what will the metaverse comprise of it will contain headsets right it will contain uh, augmented reality virtual reality it will contain technologies that allow us to feel the sensors right also important point to consider is it will contain a set of decentralized technologies i'm referring to blockchain and smart contracts as a backbone to provide uh, the business of digital assets i mean i'm not looking at metaverse which is today is like entering a netflix film you right. know we are browsing art galleries in the metaverse right, right, right. but we ought to do something better than that today the metaverse are not so sophisticated that forces people to just sit there right it's not addictive enough people are going to different metaverses to see what's happening but it is not it hasn't become an addiction at not some yet, stage anyways. yeah at some stage it will become addictive but more than addiction can we do business in the metaverse and that opens up a lot more opportunities so when we talk about a set of iot devices the set of headsets ar vr artificial intelligence machine learning we talk about the whole cloud environment it is not metaverse is not going to be set up by one organization inside a data center it will reside on the cloud it will reside across multiple clouds it will have a set of decentralized technologies as i mentioned like blockchain smart contracts and therefore in my view the current kind of threats will continue to pervade and we have already started seeing uh, the kind of phishing scams are happening in the metaverse right these current threats will continue to happen in metaverse Correct. yes that is important but we will have a new set of threats right what are those new set of threats if i if you would ask since we are using blockchain and smart contracts we are talking about decentralized money we are talking about crypto payments today we use central bank currency we use credit cards and we use uh, pay now digital payments or we use coins and hard currencies how will it happen in the metaverse we can't use because it's a virtual environment so we have to use virtual currency right yes yes now will we have central bank supported digital currencies we call as cbdcs or we will have private currencies which are all blockchain driven mm-hmm. right they are decentralized now there are risks related to those decentralized money right because they all reside on the blockchain does everyone understand how to secure at an individual level does it people understand how to secure their digital decentralized money in the crypto world or the metaverse in the blockchain world you may go with a exchange but you have a choice do you want to, you want them to have a custody of your money and tag it to your name then you're completely dependent on them in today's world we depend on the security of the bank or the integrity of the bank because they are regulated well in the metaverse will all these companies that are doing business in the metaverse will be regulated we don't know that but again when you talk about regulations it goes against the principles of decentralization so again you know we are at the we are at the cusp of this emerging technology and that's what makes it interesting but it is what we do collectively as a society over the next 3 to 5 years will determine how safe the metaverse will be yeah i'll give you one more example i mean some uh, some of my friends and colleagues have invested in cryptocurrencies and and i said i will also put some s- small investments to learn about it and i'm now worry if something happens to me today if i pass away what happens to that money well if you right? have it on your mobile phone and you gave say your wife your 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 mobile phone passcode then she can have access to it i suppose oh. hopefully i mean hopefully but she must know the passphrase to my secret key yes. but the point i was trying to bring emphasize on is today something happens and to what happens to you as a person then your family can go to the respective financial organizations that's right because you're the nominees uh, you're the next of kin and you they will get access to your assets let's say we are we are brother and sister and i i trust you completely and i give you my private key then it it means that it is your money as well right so these are some of the nuances of tech you know some technological right. complexities i don't think we as a collective society has had grasp of what's coming and there are different pockets of uh, organizations uh, efforts are happening and and which is why it makes it exciting we, we in sandra charter or as part of sc ventures we experiment and we incubate startups 
But as part of that, we also continuously evaluate emerging technologies. And we have made some investments in Metaverse. In fact, just yesterday, we signed a memorandum of understanding with an AI company called Kia.ai, which uh, builds Metaverses. And right. we are looking to explore the development of a commercial hub in the Metaverse. Oh, so doing like AI type stuff in Metaverse. Correct. Combining so. Metaverse and AI. Wow, that's exciting and that's going to well, blow many people's minds away. All these are emerging in the cusp, not mature technologies. And therefore, we ought to have some level of caution and responsibility and figure out what are the right way of adopting this, what is the kind of framework we need to have in place. And that's important. And I think our discussion is happening at the right time because these are the things that will become very important uh, in the near future. Now, people will always uh, debate, oh, you want to remain in the metaverse and you will continuously remain in a virtual environment. Is that a good thing to do? You know, and people complain today about constantly being on the phones. But if your phone has become a device that gives you access to everything in life, then if you are on the phone all the time, it, it is not a good professional courtesy, human courtesy, but everything happens on one device today, right? Yeah, as I like to say to, you know, uh, my friends, you know, technologies is wonderful, but do not abuse it, right? Correct. So any technology, you know, uh, can bring a lot of benefits to our lives. The thing has got a good and bad part, right? That's I was right, just that's mentioning right. earlier in the conference that we are talking about resilience, mm -hmm. right? So we have to figure out, it's not about how to prevent anything happening to me. There's no 100%. There's nothing. You, we, we have to recognize that we will be attacked. Correct. And we will be breached. Correct. So we have to assume that we will be breached, we will be attacked. But if we are breached, if we are attacked, do we know how to promptly get up? That's right. Can we spring back into shape? Right. right. Well, and that is the resilience. We ought to figure out what is required. We obviously have to protect the citizenry, especially those who are not very technologically savvy, cyber savvy, and they, they get interested in exploring these new technologies and they get duped, mm. they get fooled. And in the last few years of the crypto environment, a lot of exchanges have lost money, millions of dollars. Yeah, that's right. A lot of people have lost, some because of cyber issues, some because the business models itself were that's not right. sustainable. Correct. And we have seen many cases like that. Yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I, I know that we can go on and on about Metaverse because it's such an exciting topic, but I'm aware and sensitive about the time. So one last question, and I think this is a question that many people has in mind as well. Now, in the Metaverse, we have avatars, obviously, um, and there's a lot of conversations about linking avatars to real-life identities, right? And part of that uh, sort of discussion is also about you know how the threats that yeah. Some may be exposed um, or experienced as an avatar. How is that going to be carried over to real life? The, that discussion is still at a very early stage, I guess. Correct. I mean, there are a great point, right, about this avatars and which we relate to as identities in the metaverse, right? Now, uh, you are one person, you are one real person in the real world, and you can have 10 different avatars in the metaverse, in, on different metaverses. And if you steal and, something in the metaverse, is, and is you, that? You may want to have that way. You may want one person, you may declare that the, all these 10 avatars are, do, does everyone need to know that these 10 avatars remain to one person? Sometimes for legitimate reasons, uh, you may not want to, right? You want to remain private and anonymous. It's so it's important, how do you protect you know, when you talk about cyber, is often the, the CI triad is used, confidentiality, integrity, right. availability. But now we have to recognize that we can't just talk about confidentiality, integrity, availability. We have to talk about privacy, anonymity, repudiation. Uh, all these things matter a lot. And therefore, it is quite important to give these options to for those who want to remain private and anonymous and those who want to declare themselves. Now, if you remain private and anonymous, and if these are bad actors, if you are not able to attribute actions performed by the avatars in the metaverse to the real individuals, then how are you going to have any law enforcement? How, how are you going to make it a safe place for people to Correct. interact, right? In fact, a year ago almost, I, rem I don't remember, somebody in the Middle East said, that, should a murder in metaverse be deemed illegal? Exactly, uh, that's it's, right. It's a, it's a fascinating yeah. question. I mean, if you kill somebody in the metaverse, have you killed a virtual digital representation? 
But if you're really doing businesses mm. and if that has got some economic, commercial, business value. Right. So that brings a whole lot of topic, right? What should the law enforcement be in the metaverse? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we have immediate solutions for that. Yeah, that's an uh, important topic in the context of cyber resilience as well, isn't it? Correct, absolutely. I mean, uh, these things have... Now today, I think it was a World Economic Forum I read recently. They talked about some three things. Uh, one is about the impact of AI. Specifically, they talked about DAL-E, which is a AI tool to create realistic images. And ChatGPT, which has become a quite a uh, news item in the recent uh, couple of months. So what it would mean is you are in the metaverse and you write something and ChatGPT will help you create a complete content based on what thoughts you have. And then it will also, using DALI, it will also give you uh, realistic images. So the, you are participating, yeah. the participant in the metaverse is creating content. You know, so that is one part we need to keep in the back of mind. The second thing that they highlighted, an example is, I think they identified a case in Hermes handbags, you know, one of the fashion labels. And somebody created an NFT uh, of a Hermes handbag, selling that NFT for a price. And that brings another, Good you know, question about how do we know about copyright yeah, protection, IP protection, property and stuff. intellectual yeah. property. And the third part, I found it very Exciting to know that Interpol, they have developed their own metaverse. They have launched their own metaverse, right? And that's interesting. What they do is, they provide to their own uh, officers, right? Interpol officers, forensic training program, okay. programs. And what that helps them to do is, it helps them to, uh, you know, have some realistic impression of what kind of crimes could happen in the metaverse. Wow. These three things we ought to keep at the back of our mind. Right, okay. As collectively as a society across different nations, across different technology service providers, uh, I always felt that, you know, it's not about one technology provider doing everything. Mm. We are not talking about Google or Microsoft or all these fine companies that we call as big behemoth centralized entities deciding everything for us. It's a collection of a lot of these decentralized small organizations and collectively with the support of uh, law enforcement in the countries, support of regulators, support of governments, will we be able to establish a metaverse environment or a set of metaverses. Uh, you will have different metaverses and we will hopefully... Uh, so it's quite futuristic in a way. So the science fiction part of me, you right, know, the right, fiction yeah. part, I, I enjoy that. Yes. And I hope it doesn't remain a fiction. Well, and we make a better, you know, a better progress towards it. Well, it has been 30 years since uh, the, the book came out, Got right? It. And it takes about, I would say, 30 years before it becomes a hype. So maybe it will take another 30 years before it becomes like a reality that, yeah, you know, yeah. we are talking about today. But it just sounds like it's definitely not going away. It's not it, going it, away. I, it's I think powering it, ahead. Correct, correct. I, I'm skeptical about everything yeah, these days. I, as I'm getting old, I'm skeptical about every technology. But I ask questions. I ask questions. I try to understand and understand what can be done. Because you could, you, you know, a bad person will do bad things. Yeah, that's right. So, um, as you mentioned earlier, regulations, uh, it will be uh, interesting to see how regulators respond to some of these uh, potential um, threats. Well, not potential, they are real life threats. Um, uh, for example, the crypto hacks and also the law enforcement, how they will come up with a framework to protect um, avatars and yeah. our activities in the metaverse. So, it sounds like we're still in the very much early stages. Infancy. But yeah, right, I would infancy, call it still right. infancy. infancy is the right yeah, word. Yeah. And um, yeah, and so thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Viran yeah. Mentra, for sharing your thoughts and you know where you see the threats are as we stand today and how it's going to develop. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, the audience will you know take away with them some of the lessons that you know you yeah. provided. And the top important point is read the book, right? True, <laughs> true. I mean, if you are really passionate about it, yes, you read should the read book. the book. It's it's a little difficult to read but I, I've taken a long time to read it but it's one of those things right if you're passionate about it you want to know what could potentially happen hopefully in it's 10 like years time we could well. be you know I could meet you in the metaverse 
Well, I will have an avatar, so maybe I'm not sure whether we will recognize each other. We'll keep each other anonymous. How's that? True, true, true. Yeah, I could be. I may not be Virat Mantri in metaverse. Who knows? I may be a superwoman in metaverse. On that note, thank you very much, Viran. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.